All right, hey, I want to do something real quick. Could everybody extend your hands to Wesley? Um, as we, we made an announcement a little while back that he is heading off to Tennessee, which is where I just was. I laid the groundwork for you. <laughs> Tennessee, and he's going to go, and he's going to do this amazing training opportunity with an organization called Caleb Global. And he's going to spend half his time in Tennessee, but he's also going to be traveling to, I believe, Israel, Jordan, and Egypt. <laughs> Nailed it. And so we're just super, we love this man. He, he's, he's like the way that he's pastored the youth. And listen, he's not leaving, he's coming back, okay? Praise, praise yeah, praise God is right. <laughs> <laughs> praise God. And so we're, we're just really excited that we get an opportunity this morning to send him. And so I just want us to pray real quick. Lord, we thank you, God, for this opportunity. And Lord, even as Wesley shared last time, Lord, where he talked about how he felt like one of the things that was going to happen was he was going to bring something back for this body, for convergence, Lord. We just thank you for that, Lord. And we just ask you that you would bless his time. We ask you that you would bless his time there, Lord. We just ask you that this would be such a divine appointment season. Wow. I feel that really strongly. Lord, we just ask you for divine appointments or that he would run into people, even in other countries, that would have a key. And so we just thank you for that, Lord. We just, as a body, we just send him. We thank you for everything that you're doing in and through him as he goes for what he's going to come back with, Lord. And we just ask you that you would protect him, that you'd watch over him, that, you would, um, that your blood would cover him as he goes. And we just thank you, God, for all that you are going to unlock and release, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right. Now I'm going to hand it to you. That's good. Amen, amen. Um, I want to ask a couple things. Number one, I would like for everyone to move up. I feel like we need to be family this morning. So if there's empty space, come fill up chairs. Um, you can do that now. I don't know. I felt like we needed to be together yeah, there you go. <laughs> as close as close gets. Um, this is my last week before I'll be leaving. I'll be leaving on Thursday. And so, um, yeah, it's good to be here this morning. I'm really glad to be here. I'm excited for what the Lord's already doing. And I like this. I like the nearness. Um, this morning, I want to just start off with I love that Faith just came and shared, and um, I really feel like I want to give space for testimony of what the Lord is doing right now. Um, we've had a lot of people that have been encountering the Lord and having some amazing testimonies. So I actually want to start out with, I'm going to have, can I have Jesse and Sayla come up? <laughs> Let's go. Um, as you all know, we were, we were at youth camp a lot. Not this week, but last week, and lots of our youth really just had really amazing times with the Lord, and so I wanted to have a few of them share. Um, <laughs> rock, paper, scissors for who's first? <laughs> oh, wait, what does that mean? Is that first or? Okay. Okay, there you go. All right, so yeah, I just want to, and I want to give prep, I want to, really quick, the reason why I'm having them share, and there's a few more is because I feel like the Lord, it's exactly what Andrew said, this morning we're going to taste and see. And we've heard, and there's things that we've seen from afar, but this morning we're going to taste and see. And so I want to just start off testimonies with tasting and seeing. Okay. Um, you know, it's kind of ironic because before we, like, shared our testimonies on Wednesday with the whole youth, I was really doubting, like, my encounter with the Lord. Um, just because, like, I wasn't drunk in the spirit and I didn't I didn't get slain in the spirit and things like that so I was like it's no big deal like it doesn't really matter but once I told everybody it was a big deal <laughs> so <laughs> um before camp I didn't really have like a revelation of the cross I guess because like I said on Wednesday people don't really get crucified anymore <laughs> so I didn't really know, like, the weight that that carried um, and, like, what Jesus had to endure for us on the cross. Um, so I think it was the second morning. Um, I was just sitting in worship, just 
you know, nothing like too extravagant. I was just sitting in my seat, and there's this like big, that's not, not really big, but it was a life-size cross in the middle of the sanctuary. And I look up, and I see Jesus um, just on the cross, and he looks at me, and he says, um, this was for you. With fire in his eyes, <laughs> so much love just like washing over me. Um, so yeah, just the whole week I just like sat with that, um, and I just, I would just like look at the cross, and I just realized like, yeah, what he did was for me, um, and what he did was individually for each one of you, um, so yeah, that just like resonated with me for the whole week, and I just got to know the Lord in a deeper, more personal way, so yeah. Yeah. My goodness. Um, bye. Bye. Um, for me, I kind of went into camp and I like didn't want to like limit God or like expect him to do like things because I wanted like him to like exceed my expectations and to like do whatever he wanted. I didn't want to like put him into a box. Uh, and so like each day was like a different encounter of like him revealing himself as something else. Um, the first or second day, I can't remember, it's all blurred, um, he revealed himself as Father and as Abba, and um, I was just wrecked because I was like, wow, like, you're really my dad, like, you're really my dad, um, and then the next day, it was like his beauty, and like his, he was as king, and I just, like, saw him, like, so clearly. I, like, I was, like, on the floor. And I, like, look up, and there are, like, his feet right there. And then, like, I just saw him, like, walking. And his crown was, like, shining. It was crazy. Um, and then another day, I think it was, like, one of the last days, um, it was, like, bridegroom. And I was just, like, we were, I was in the back. And I just, like, saw him walking down. And he, like, would look at everyone as he was passing because we were all his bride. Um, and then another day, um, I was dancing, and we were t talking about, like, dancing in the fire and dancing in the water, and I, like, saw him right in front of me, and he was, like, mirroring my movements, and he was, like, smiling at me, and we were just dancing together, and that was friend day. Um, <laughs> friend day! Every day is friend day. Um, last thing, um, I, like, went outside after everything was done, and I just, like, looked up at the stars, and I was just so overwhelmed with, like, awe of, like, the creator. Like, he literally created the heavens and the earth, and I just, like, fell to my knees, and I was so overwhelmed, and I just started weeping, and everyone, like, surrounded me and started crying, and we were all just, like, screaming and yelling. We were so overwhelmed, and then a leader comes up, and she's like, hey, guys, can you take this inside maybe it's like 11 o'clock and we were like okay and so I like try to get up and I just start like laughing and I'm like whoa like everywhere and I'm like screaming and laughing and everybody in my cabin can like attest to this and then like someone had to like help me up into my bunk and when my leader is like helping me and she touches me and she falls out <laughs> It was just a crazy night, just, like, being overwhelmed with, like, the awe of the creator and, like, yeah, all his faces. So, yeah. That's so good. That's so good. I love that. And each of these testimonies is an invitation. And each of these is an invitation. Um, I want to have Dwight come up and share. Dwight was not at camp. But... Dwight shared something at our staff meeting on Tuesday, and it was just really amazing, and I really felt it was important for him to share this this morning. You ever feel like you've never, you're not supposed to be here? <clears throat> well, that's what I felt like Tuesday, because they were sharing all of these testimonies that happened at camp, and I'm sitting here, boy, that's, that's good. That's good stuff. In... A lot of those things have happened to me. God has done those things in me. I've seen them. I've participated in them. But, you know, there was something that happened to, to me and my wife um, on uh, over the weekend. And uh, I was going to share it. And then they started sharing all these things. And I'm sitting here, boy, I don't, you know, I'm, 
ain't too much, you know, and but God wouldn't let it go. And so I shared, and this is what I shared. Phyllis had uh, hip replacement surgery Friday. And we had been praying, Lord, if you want to heal, we really would like you to heal this hip. And it's okay if you want to do it before the surgery, go ahead and do that. And uh, he didn't. <laughs> but uh, he did heal her hip. And uh, we were sitting and watching the live stream Sunday morning. And I've had a great marriage, 49 years. I couldn't have picked a better wife. But there was something that happened Sunday morning. There was just a, cl a closeness I felt. And it was a deeper thing between us. I don't know if Phyllis felt it or not. I think she did. She'll let me know later. She's watching. Uh, but it was just God granted us uh, an intimacy that we hadn't had for 49 years. Not that it wasn't bad for 49 years. We had, we were very close. But it was just at that extra little bit more. So I encourage you, you know, God is with us all the time. And he's doing things in us all the time. It's not just the instant healing and the signs and wonders. I mean, let's bring them on. Let's do it. Let's, let's have more and more of that. But don't forget the little things that he does every day. That is so good. That's a word. That's a big word. Um, Joshua, will you come up? Yeah. <laughs> You're like. All right. Tell us what's up. I'm Joshua. Hi. Okay. So, my testimony. Oh, yeah. That's sweet. Kind of sweet. So, probably bef before camp, I was feeling very um, lost and distant from God and my family and friends. Um, went to camp hoping that I would, like, have a closer relationship with friends and family and God. Um, the third day, I, uh, during free time, I was sit climbing over a lake, and, um, you're supposed to, like, wait until you're, like, halfway down, and, um, I wanted the full, like, throttle of it, so I jumped immediately, um, and I landed on my ear, and my eardrum popped, and, um, the nurse wanted to send me to, uh, the ER to get it checked out, but I wanted to wait until after worship. So, um, during worship, I, um, a group of boys laid their hands on me, and, um, I was, like, crying because of the amount of pain, the, me, uh, the, the worship was, like, hurting my ear because of how loud it was, um, and a group of boys laid their hands on me and prayed for me, and it didn't feel like better, but it felt like covered, like um, someone had their hand over it, like blocking the noise from coming in. Um, and I went on to the, like the um, balcony um, to worship, and two pastors came over and laid their hands and started praying for my ear. Um, and then like that covering like came off, and like my ear stopped hurting, and he, and I, and I was just like, Sitting up there, just worshiping silently, and I heard um, a voice say, go down and worship me with everything you have. So um, I went down, and I was, <laughs> was worshiping, um, and that was my revelation of, um, like, a new intimacy with God that I never had before. Yeah. That's amazing, bro. I love that. That's beautiful. Uh, Toby. Man. 
man, camp was really good. I came expecting a just like a regular old camp, nothing too special. Um, last year was like really good. I made a lot of friends, but didn't actually have an experience with God that was like super powerful. Um, so the third day we were invited to, the, yeah, the third day we were invited to um, stand up if we had never felt or heard the Lord um, in a personal way. And they didn't want anybody to pray over them, just like personally encounter the Lord, like just purely the Lord. Um, so I stood up for that and uh, felt the Lord like in a very physical way, like touch me. Um, and it was like really powerful. I got some conviction <laughs> from the Lord, just like holy conviction about things I need to let go um, and things like areas that I'd been passive in my life. Um, and one of those were my phone. So <laughs> I smashed my phone the next morning and got a new phone. Yeah. And God freed me from that distraction in my life um, to pursue a deeper relationship with him. Um, and the next mor- in the next night, uh, the pastor was preaching on devotion or a uh, commitment to the Lord versus uh, abandoning yourself to the Lord. Um, and he used the analogy of like this little kiddie pool. And he like cleaned his face. And he's like, the church is really clean, but they're not actually, like they're really beautiful, but they're not actually abandoned for the Lord. And they're not having the intimate relationship with the Lord that God created them for. Um, so he was using that analogy. And then he jumped in as a sign of abandonment to the Lord. Um, and it was really powerful. And then Wesley came up. <laughs> I was getting touched the whole time during the service. Um, but Wesley came up and was like, if you need to, <laughs> if you feel it, you totally have permission to jump in. Um, and there wasn't any altar call or anything like that. It was just like he was, they needed to end the sermon because they had something to do afterwards. But Wesley invited me to do that. And so I got in and something broke loose in the spirit. And like everybody was being touched by the Lord. And it was like really powerful. Um, and then camp wasn't the same after that. <laughs> but yeah, that's my testimony. That's good. Thank you, Toby. You're not the same after that. Praise God. Isn't that good? Jesus moves on hearts and changes lives. And I, that's what I, that's just what I'm feeling. And that's what we've been experiencing is like the Lord can do it just because he can and wants to. Um, and <sighs> I felt, I felt the Lord told me to share testimonies and to take communion. And I didn't know what was in between, but I feel like I know what's in between. So, um, I w- the reason I felt it was really important to have Dwight share and just to have testimonies is because I think sometimes we put God in a box of what it looks like for him to move. Like, we have these expectations of, like, and it's kind of like, it's like what Sayla was saying. It's like, oh, if I'm going to see Jesus, I need to be weeping on the floor for three hours. And so we, we actually limit, we limit and discount what he's doing because it doesn't look like what we think it would. Does that make sense? And actually, Jesus wants us to recognize him in everyday life. Like, he's, oh, man, there's... <laughs> I want to talk really quickly, just for a few minutes, about the mountaintops and the tables. <laughs> so, wow. You know, all through the Old Testament, people had encounters with the Lord on mountains. Y'all know that? Like, Moses encountered the Lord on a mountain. Elijah encountered him on a mountain. Moses encountered, like, several times Moses encountered him on a mountain. There's all these mountaintop encounters, which are really good. And the Lord still has, he still encounters us in these mountaintop places in our lives. You know what I mean when I say mountaintop? It's like, it's these like, what we'd call power encounters. And it's like, whoa, this is some big life-changing mountaintop glory. Like, praise God, there's a cloud, there's smoke, there's a voice, there's all this stuff. You know what I'm saying? Mountaintop. And the Lord still encounters us on mountaintops. And Jesus brought his disciples up to mountains, and amazing thing happened on mountains, and food multiplied up on mountains, and all these things happened, and Jesus, in Matthew 17, he's transfigured before Peter, James, and John. Y'all know this story? 
he comes up, he brings Peter, James, and John up a mountain. They're up there, and boom. There's glory, there's a cloud. Jesus is shining as bright as the sun. Moses and Elijah show up, like, what? I don't even, I like try to picture that. I'm like, I don't know, the little ghost of Moses and Elijah? Like, I don't know. But it's some big thing. There's this glory. There's, I don't know, there's probably sounds too. And Peter is like, Lord, it's good that we're here. He's having this mountaintop encounter. See, Moses and Elijah, were, it's the law and the prophets, right? Moses represents the law. Elijah represents the prophets. It's like they're, Peter, James, and John are literally looking at Jesus Moses and Elijah, so it's like, it's the culmination of everything. They're like literally thousands of years of law and prophets are now right here, and everything has led up to this moment. Like, it is a mountain top experience. It's like a wow kind of thing. But you know what happens? This is so interesting. This is Matthew 17. You can turn there if you want. Matthew 17 they're up on this mountain, and Peter says, this is just so funny. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, <laughs> it just cracks me up. He's just going on. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, this is my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased. Listen to him. That's really interesting. So they're having this mountaintop encounter. Peter wants to literally camp there, and he gets rebuked. The Lord himself rebukes him for wanting to live on the mountaintop. What does he say? He says, this is my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased. Listen to him. Follow him. Listen. A lot of times we're looking for mountaintop encounters, but if we don't realize that the mountaintop is unto seeing Jesus, then we totally miss it. Literally, he was looking at the encounter and the Lord said, look at Jesus. Listen to him. Listen to him. Because you can have whatever encounters you want and encounters you didn't expect, but if you're not walking away with deeper intimacy with the Lord, I don't know what the fruit is. And I mean, I've, I've lived a crazy life. I've seen amazing things. I've seen blind eyes open and deaf ears healed and people raised from the dead. But I can tell you that those things don't comfort me. Jesus does. <laughs> Like, I don't, I, don't, <laughs> I don't go to bed at night and pray to the miracles I've seen. I don't pray to the mountaintop encounters I had. I need to know, listen to him. Listen to him. Is the mountaintop bad? No, it's amazing. It will change your life. Like, literally, the, mount, like, the mountaintop encounters, I think seeds get planted inside of you that change your life. But the problem the problem is when we're looking for mountaintop encounters and we're not looking for him. And we can do that, and we do that. And this isn't, I, it's turning to rebuke. This is not a rebuke. I just want us to be aware of something, is that you can, you can be searching for an intimate encounter apart from him, apart from relationship, and it's not sustained. And it just turns into... Yeah, intimacy apart from covenant is prostitution and adultery. And so if we're looking for intimacy with the Lord apart from relationship with him, we're, we're actually prostituting the spirit. We're actually wanting him to give us a seed so we can grow and be fruitful apart from him. It doesn't work. Um, mountaintops are amazing. The Lord calls you to mountaintops. He literally calls Peter, James, and John up a mountain. Like, he's like, come. And they came. I don't know what they knew they were going to expect or what they were going to experience. But he calls them up the mountain. And mountaintop experiences are amazing. But can I tell you something? Here's what's crazy. A few chapters later, Matthew 26, Jesus is instituting the new covenant. Like, 
the old covenant's passing away, and he's sitting at a table now, right? He's, so the transfiguration, there's this glory. Jesus is shining. There's a voice. There's a cloud. They're like, whoa, this is ridiculous. Now Jesus takes off his robe. He washes the disciples' feet. They sit at a table. He takes bread and wine. He says, this is my body broken for you. This is my blood poured out of the new covenant. There was no cloud. Jesus was not shining like the sun. There wasn't some booming voice speaking to them. You would think, like, we would think when Jesus instituted the new covenant to them, there'd be all those things, right? You'd think he'd go up a mountain and be like, all right, here it is. You know what I mean? No, he's at a table with them. And if the disciples only recognized Jesus on the mountain, they would have completely missed what he did at the table. They would have completely missed it. And I'm afraid sometimes we miss it. We're, we think the Lord only moves in these mountaintops. And so when he's wanting to take us to the table, we miss him. And we don't see him. And, and I believe on the mountaintop you encounter the glory of the Lord. You encounter, I think you encounter the glory and the power of the Lord on the mountaintop. But at the table you encounter his nature and his faithfulness and covenant with him. And you actually walk out at the table what you got on the mountaintop. What the Lord did on the mountaintop is actually lived out at tables. And I don't just mean like eating tables. Does that make sense? Like when I say table, I mean it's like everyday life. It's rhythms. It's family. It's school. It's, it's the things that we do every day. And you can encounter the Lord every day and have intimate times with him. You can have like mountaintops, you know, with him. I'm not saying it's like those are rare and far, or, you know, between. No, that's not the point. The point is we live with him at the table. And actually, I'll go as far as to say, well, I've never thought this before. Thank you, Lord. In the Old Testament, they encountered him on mountains. But the glory of the new covenant is Emmanuel, God with us at the table. No one, ate, no, one, no one met Jesus at the table in the Old Testament, but they met him on mountains. So the glory of the new covenant is actually Emmanuel, God with us. It's that he's here. It's that he's actually in our midst. And it's that we can actually like realize that he's with us. And, and I want to say, like, lives change at the table. Amen. How many of you in here have had life-changing things happen through community and people and family and friends, right? Like, I want us to not discount the table because what Dwight shared about he and Phil is being married for 49 years but feeling a deeper connection, praise the Lord. That's huge. That's the Lord. That is a testimony. And, and here's, oh, here's the scary thing about the table is that we can't avoid it, but we can blind our eyes to it. What I mean by that is if, if we're so like, we're having a Jesus night, come encounter the Lord, it can be like, I don't want to go. But your family and friends and community, you're kind of stuck there. You're kind of stuck there. And so either, either we'll continue to not recognize him in that and just be like, oh, it's kind of whatever, or we actually open our eyes and be like, Jesus, I want to meet you here. And I can tell you, my life has changed. I've had unbelievable mountain experiences with the Lord. I've had unbelievable valley. I've been talking about the valley. We've had, I've had valley experiences, and I've had table times with the Lord through everyday life. Lives change at the table. What the Lord does on the mountain is meant to be lived out at the table. Through the breaking of bread. Through family meetings through spending time with friends. Um, Harold, will you come up here? <laughs> this is Harold, my amazing brother and friend. Harold and I have met at the table. When did we start meeting? We started meeting in, I think, January of 2020. It might be. 
I don't remember when it was. Consistently since then, but yeah. Yeah. Harold and I have been meeting every week. We've had a few weeks off, but I can tell you something, that this man has been transformed at the table. <laughs> you look different. You know that? He looks different, and it's not my fault. <laughs> what happens is we eat salads together. <laughs> Praise the Lord for salads. Diga, diga. And the Lord changes us. We look different. Because we meet at the table every week. And we've had amazing times in the glory of the Lord together, but we also just sit and talk about deep things of the Lord. And sometimes we go try to find ice cream after lunch. <laughs> All right, you can sit down. Harold, you're amazing. Thank you. I love you. I love you too. I'm glad you're here. Side note, if you live in Bembrook, it is really hard to find ice cream after 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> We've had a misadventure trying to do that. Lives change at the table. I'm reminded of the story of on the road to Emmaus. Y'all know this story? This is Luke 24. Jesus resurrects. The beginning of Luke 24 is the resurrection. Then a few verses later, it says, on that same day, <laughs> on that so Jesus is dead. He raises up. The Spirit of God quickens his body, and he wakes up. He's encountering people. On that same day, he meets two men walking on the road, on the road to Emmaus. These guys are talking. They're saying they're talking about everything that happened. They're disappointed because Jesus had died, and they thought he was going to be some big king messiah, and they're like, what's going on? Jesus is walking with them and talking with them. They don't recognize him, which is really wild. It says, this is Luke 24, verse 27. It says, in beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them all of the scriptures and the things concerning himself. So Jesus, okay, this is crazy. The word became flesh. So Jesus is the word, and he's opening the word and speaking the word as the word. And they missed him. Like, I wish this, like, what's, his, what's the guy's name? Cle uh, Cleopas? Is that it? Where is it? I don't, yeah, it's on there somewhere. Yeah. I would be like, bro, record this sermon. Like, this is the greatest teaching of all time. If, like, I wish this was recorded, but I can tell you something. Jesus was literally revealing himself to them through the law and the prophets. Once again, it's Moses and Elijah. But they missed him. You know when they saw him? <laughs> wow. Verse 29. They urged him strongly, saying, stay with us, for it's evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him. <laughs> they recognized him at the table. Jesus resurrected. And on that same day, he just walks with these two guys seven miles and then sits at a table with them. Like, I would think Jesus would resurrect, and on that same day, it's like, I don't know, he'd start some big, I mean, like, do a Billy Graham revival, something, right? Be like, I, what I said was true, you know what I mean? Like, I'm serious. What did Jesus do? He resurrects and goes and walks with two guys for seven miles and sits at the table with them. Where do we find Jesus? At the table. And I, and I like, it's through the breaking of the bread. And again, when I say table, I mean actual food. I mean actually a table, but I mean also our life rhythms. It's with family. It's with friends. It's with community. It's with the things we do every day that seem so mundane. But I want to tell you, those are the places where we meet him. Those are the places where we encounter him. And I don't know. This is a scary thought, but sometimes... I feel like if Jesus were to preach the scriptures to me 
and all the law and the prophets, I wonder if I also would miss it. But I wonder if I sat down with him and he broke bread with me if I would see him. Because you can't, you can't avoid the table. You can't avoid it. It's there. It's real. It's, it changes us and it molds us and shapes us. Um, I, wanted, I want to take communion. Can I have, Jason, can you bring up those two baskets that are back there? Um, we have communion in basket. And what I want to do is, if you want to take communion, I want us just to kind of come to the front and take it together at the front as one. Um, we'll put one on each side. And I felt like the Lord, oh, we can put it there. <sighs> communion means a lot of things. Like there's a hundred, uh, more than a hundred, there's a thousand plus ways we can approach communion in the body and the, the blood. But this morning, I want us to remember I want us to remember who he is and what he's done and to take this as a symbol of meeting him at the table as we eat and as we drink. And we can commemorate the mountaintops, but I want us to actually take this at his table. And like, I don't even know what that looks like. I, when I say that, I don't even know what that means, to be honest. But there's something about when I, when I take this, I have to recognize that this is what sustains me, whether it's through a mountaintop or whether it's at a table. That whatever encounter I have with the Lord, it's his broken body and his blood that makes it happen impossible. And as long as his body's broken, as long as his body is broken for us, his covenant is with us. And if we're in covenant, then we can meet him wherever. If we're in covenant with him, then we don't just meet him once a week. If we're in covenant with him, it's not just these, these one night stands and encounters with the Lord. We're in covenant with him. And the sign of his covenant with us is his broken body. And as long as this body's broken, we're in the middle of it. Don't know for he in heaven, for eternity, he's the lamb that was slain. He didn't recover. He wasn't raised and didn't have holes in his hands anymore. Because his resurrected body carries the sign of his covenant with us. That's the way he wants it. And if he's in covenant with you... <laughs> if he's in covenant with you, you can recognize him and see him always. At the table, on the mountain, in the valley, in the desert, in the river. And so I want us, you can just come up here and take these. Oh, that's good. Yeah, spread them out. blood poured out. So as we take this this morning, like I said, I want us to take it as a sign and a symbol of recognizing his broken body and his blood poured out no matter where we are. And actually recognizing and expecting him to reveal himself to us at the table and on the mountain. And so, Lord, 
we thank you for your body that was broken for us. Lord, we thank you for your body that's broken for us. Lord, that you chose to make covenant with us. Thank you, Lord, you chose to make covenant with us, not on the mountaintop, (laughs) not in a place that doesn't seem reachable to us in everyday life, but Lord, you made covenant to us at the simplicity of a table. You made covenant with us with food. And so, Lord, as we take of your broken body today, Lord, we remember your covenant. We remember your faithfulness. And Lord, we choose to take this and we say that we will meet you at the table. Lord, we will meet you at the table. We will expect for you to be at the table. We expect you at our tables, Lord. Lord, we repent for for not expecting you at our tables. We repent for only expecting you at camp only expecting you at conferences, only expecting you during worship. Lord, we repent, and we come today and we take of your body that's so accessible to us every day, every day, and we take and we eat. Lord, we thank you for your blood poured out. Lord, we thank you for the forgiveness and the remission of sins. Lord, we thank you you've invited us into your bloodline and into your family. And Lord, just as we need water, we need you. Just as we need water, we need your spirit. And Lord, this morning as we take of this, Lord, I pray that you would remind us Lord, you remind us of your nearness, that you are Emmanuel, God with us. You are God with us. Can we say you're God with me? Can we just say that? You are God with me. You are God with me. You are God with me. Thank you, Lord, that you're with us. Lord, we don't need to do anything to make you come. Lord, you're with us. And Lord, as we take this this morning, Lord, I pray that we would remember, we'd remember that you're with us. We'd remember that you're here. We'd remember what you've done. In Jesus' name, we take and we drink. And Lord, I pray that you would teach us and you would guide us into what it looks like to live a life and covenant with you. Lord, you'd show us how to walk out what you spoke to us on the mountain. And Lord, you'd show us how to yield to your voice at the table. Lord, that we would see your faithfulness in your nature. Whoa. I hear the Lord say, and the table's unto the cross. The mountain is unto the table and the table is unto the cross. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would allow us to remember and to live in constant awareness of your covenant with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. That's good. I bless you to see Jesus in you and through you and around you at the table and on the mountain.